Corey and I have took a little break from work just to come and sit down for a few minutes and, and do a little update with you just to talk about a few various different things. We're out here in the greenhouse. It's not real cold outside, It's but it's not real warm in here. It's about, what is it, Corey? A little over 60 in here. I was afraid it might be too hot out here, but it's definitely, definitely not. It's kind of, um, the sunshine's really warm outside today. If you sit in the sun, it feels really good. But then all of a sudden, a big wind will come that's really chilly and cold. So definitely not, uh, winter's not gone for good yet. Of course, we know that it's not. But we are seeing signs of spring everywhere. So we've got daffodils blooming, yellow bells blooming. Uh, me and Corey were... Corey went down under the basement to get these chairs we were going to sit in and she noticed a little blood root blooming and I noticed a peach, our peach tree which is very small we just planted it last year it's got one little bloom on it so things are beginning to bloom and yesterday Corey and I traveled out to uh, Silva North Carolina so about it's just about an hour and a half maybe no, maybe not even that far hour, 20, hour, hour and 20 or 15 minutes something like that anyway from here to do a video we're really excited about sharing the video with you in a day or so but uh, we noticed all the way out there and all the way back things in bloom some beautiful trees pink we don't know what they were exactly maybe they were cherry trees maybe they were really big though. yeah they were really big to be a cherry tree so maybe they were like an ornamental tree but they were beautiful i uh, seen lots of yellow bells what we call yellow bells for Scythia. some people call them uh, i just learned in the dictionary of southern uh, Appalachian English Easter bushes mm. so Easter bushes anyway we so we've seen a lot of blooms between here and there so I don't know I've heard a lot of people say they're worried about all the fruit trees like the peach tree out there blooming because we'll definitely have some hard freezes between now and and May is usually when we think of cold weather being gone for good so but we can't fight the weather nothing we can do about it but just hold on and see what happens so it is an exciting time of the year no matter uh, if spring's here for good or if it comes and goes uh, granny keeps reminding me we've had lots of snows in march so we'll see her her birthday's coming up granny's is march 6th so we'll be celebrating that pretty quick here just in a few days so that's another reason to be excited for us another birthday which actually shares it with granny's is the blind pig and the acorn it will turn 15 years old Am I right? Fifteen. Yeah. And then me and Fifteen Austin's years old. Wedding anniversaries on the twelfth. Yeah. So March is going to be a busy, busy month for us. It always is, though. We're trying to get ready for planting outside and starting our seeds. We're going to, in the next uh, few days. We'll be wanting to start our tomato seeds and get them started in here in the greenhouse. And just an exciting time of the year if you're a gardener to be looking forward to all that goodness that's coming. So when we do these update videos, I like to kind of, any questions that I see over and over and over, I like to kind of try to take time to explain or answer some of them. Uh, one of the most recent ones is about, because so really exciting for us, getting our bank cleaned off and getting those beds. So several people are worried that if we don't plant something on them, you know, and it, it, on the whole bank and it rains, that it would wash and, you know, maybe have a landslide or something like that. Now that could happen, you can never foresee the future, but we've cut up, cut the bank like every two years since we lived here, at least every two years. And the thing about cutting it the way we did it, and, or the way we've always done it, and even the way Thomas did it, is that we didn't, and he didn't, pull up the roots. So all those trees that he cut, the roots are still there. All the brambles, all the bushes, the... Uh, what we call laurel and ivy, all those roots are still there. And in fact, they will they will sprout back up. You'll be amazed by the end of the summer how much growth is on that bank, which is a pain. But then on the other hand, it does keep it from washing because those roots are still there. And those plants are really technically still growing, even though they've been cut way, way back. Corey starts, she said, as soon as we sit down, I start yawning. She said, I don't know what it is about uh, when I sit down and start doing an update. I said, well, because you're relaxed. We're sitting here, and I'm talking. I'm droning on and on and on. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I do this. So I'm uh, sorry about yawning, y'all. No, it's fine. So, Corey does want to be here. She's not, oh, she's yes. not bored. No. 
Um, she's not born. Another thing, when we were doing the, me and Corey were doing the peppers out here, up potting the peppers, a lot of people ask, and I didn't explain it very well, about the solo cups. We do, it, we'd reused them. I explained that part, but I didn't explain that we poke holes in the bottom of them. Like before, when we're going to use a brand new solo cup, we I, I have a nail I leave out here. I usually leave it on one of those little oh, ledges yeah. over there. Good anyway, nail. and I just poke you know three or four holes in the bottom of it so they do have drainage holes in them uh, and another thing in that video Corey and I had our experiment our experiment uh, the milk jug sitting in the water a lot of people said you know don't leave it and I didn't explain that we wasn't going to leave them in the water we were just letting the water soak into the into the dirt and so far uh, we've had some success with them we have the chamomile is growing and the no, let's say clinches and something else. Is it just chamomile? Is that I the think only it's one? Just chamomile. just chamomile so far, yeah. So, and we did uh, move some of them back outside. So the what did we put outside? The purple cone flower and rosemary. No, what did we put out there? Anyway, we've got two jugs outside. I can't remember exactly what we put. And then we had the few maybe. Mm, maybe. Did yeah. we plant that in there? I know we, we planted did. that. We planted the fever few in oh, the little yes, one. It's still inside. Continue. And the peppers inside are still doing good. Um, so anyway, that was... We just didn't explain ourselves very well while we were doing all that. I've had some people, too, ask... Uh, me and Matt both refer to where we live as the goat bluff. What does that mean? What does... You know, they're not familiar with that term. Which just means because we live kind of on the side of the mountain, we've just kind of had to, we would say, hewn, hewn out a place when we uh, first were going to build a house here. It's just, you imagine a slope, and we had to have grading done that just kind of hew out, hewn out, we would say, but cut out a place for a house seat. And so it left that steep land all around us, in front, in the back, you know, on the sides. And so we tease about that because a goat bluff is usually somewhere really steep, where only goats can run around. So you gotta be sure-footed. So that's just kind of a personal joke that we say that we, we live on the goat bluff and we don't have much room, um, which is hard to, I know would be hard to understand for someone that wasn't familiar. Lots of houses in our area are built like this. Um, many of them on up on top of the mountain. We're by no means on top of the mountain. We're still close down to the valley. We're just kind of just barely where the slope starts, but it is a steep, steep slope. Corey's going yawn Sorry. again. It's okay. I'm trying to hold it in. It's fine. I get like that too. And the more you try not to yawn, the worse, the worse it is. It is. To... Yeah, you're like talking to somebody and being like, and then you know you're making all these faces trying to <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you might as well just yawn. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been there uh, lots of times, so don't worry about it. Um, another interesting thing that we should have talked about me and Matt should have and we didn't in the twin video if you watch the video where we were going to have twins and we just didn't even think about it we were so excited about just focusing on actually having Corey and Katie so a lot of people said well you didn't tell us how you named them uh, you should have told us how you picked their names so I thought yeah we should have why in the world didn't we think of that their names so we had all kinds of names picked out mostly Matt liked none of the names I had picked out one of them I had picked out was Ivy. I liked Ivy. He didn't like that. And then we, the whole time I was pregnant, we didn't know that Katie was a girl. So we were thinking it was a boy and a girl. And I can't remember. I liked Marshall for a boy because Pap's middle name was Marshall. And um, I don't remember if Matt had a boy name or not because those quickly, of course, as soon as I had them, those left because then we were left with two sweet girls. But Matt, finally, he was really the one that that decided on their names especially their first names so he had an aunt cora which it was really a great aunt cora but in typical appalachian fashion his family changed her name from cora with that a to cory cory uh, like we do like sarah sometimes you'll hear sari so those different so he liked cory because of that and then for katie um he his he tells this story and it's kind of true but I, I liked Katie, and he liked Katie. He says that, he, well, it, this part is true, but it's not necessarily really. He teases Katie and says that's why he named her. But his grandpa James had a mule named Kate, so that's where her name come from. But I also had a dear family member named Katie, Katie May. 
So that's where Katie come from. Um, and then their names, their middle names, kind of we just decided what went with what. And Corey's Lee, it, Miss Cindy's middle name is Lee. So that was kind of where their names come from. And uh, Katie Ann, I actually worked with a sweet, dear woman at that time, dear friend to me, and she had a daughter named Katie Ann. And I thought Ann was so pretty with Katie. Would it, And I asked her if it would be okay. And she said, oh, it would be an honor. Oh. Of course, I, I never went back to work, so and they live in another part of the county, so from that time on, and the daughter was older, of course, much older, but we never had any much contact with them after that, but she said, no, I'd be honored, so that's how Katie Ann, but other people have asked, too, about their nicknames, Chitter and Chatter. This is Chatter. Corey is Chatter. Katie is Chitter, and how they got those. Well, you might, if you watch their videos, you might have noticed they like to talk. Especially Katie. Especially Katie, but Corey can do her fair share too. Yeah. And my niece, April, she's almost to the day exactly a year younger than Corey and Katie. When she was, they were all little, they were constantly together, as you might imagine, playing. April just grew up right down the hill, so they were best playmates. And at some point, she started calling them Chitter and Chatter because cause they, cause they talked. They talked more than she did. And so she, she named them that, and then we love to tell the funny joke, because of course we all said, well then, who, who are you? Who are you if they're Cheddar and Chatter? And she says, I guess I'll just be Cheddar. <laughs> <laughs> she, was, she loved cheese. She loved cheese, yeah. She said, I guess I'll, I'll just be Cheddar. Cheddar, Cheddar, and Cheddar. Yeah, so we laughed and laughed about that. But anyway, so that's where those nicknames, uh, Cheddar and Chatter, come from. Um, and interesting, I should do a whole video about nicknames. Maybe we'll do that eventually. But another interesting talking about just nicknames in our family, we call Katie, Katie Bug a lot. I think Matt started that. That's pretty common. But we call Corey, Copy. <laughs> and it's a really interesting story. I'll let you tell why we call you Copy. On the old kind of flip phones and where they didn't have the full keyboard, you either had to type when there was three letters to a button or they had what was called like T9 word where the phone basically guessed the word that you were gonna type and it was a lot faster and anytime you tried to type Corey it put Copy and somehow Katie took that and ran with it and even Granny calls me Copy yeah. sometimes. <laughs> we all we all just start calling her Copy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah we really do. I'm gonna file that away. We need to do a video about it because we come from a long line of people that like to give nicknames. Uh, Pap yeah. There are grown men older than me walking around Cherokee County today who have nicknames that Pap give them. Now, they might not go by them all the time now, but, but if somebody them. sees them and yells out that nickname, they're like, they like, yeah. they know it had to be somebody from their, you know, from their past of spending time with Jerry Wilson for sure. So maybe we need to, we could do a whole video about that. So I guess we'll stop with our nickname stories. Uh, talking about well, before I share, I'm, i got something I want to share with you, but before we do that, we'll let Corey uh, talk about what she's been doing. What have you been doing? Oh, put me on the spot. Let's see. What have I been doing? You've been excited about planting, too. Yeah, I've been really excited about planting. Yeah. We've got pretty much all our beds here. There's one bed that we bought. It's an L-shaped bed to go kind of in a different part of the yard. It's not going to ship to the end of May, which is fine. It'll either get here this year. We thought maybe it would get here early and if not we'll just use it for next year and that will be fine but we've got all the beds we've got two more we got to get put up and in the yard and we got one of them's already put together but there'll be three more that go in the yard so we're excited about that i've been looking into making maybe making a uh, laundry detergent i've watched a lot of videos about that pros and cons not really sure yet so if anyone has any mm, you know got tips, any tips. It's, especially i would say if you've got tips because you have dirty clothes yes <laughs> dirty dirty clothes yeah from um, working outside yeah dirt yeah. grease we get really stuff. dirty so it has to be right yeah for sure so that's something i've been looking into i was even looking this morning at how to make like dish soap and hand soap you know it's really easy you can do like the dr bronner's and water and essential oil i mean you could of course just use just dr bronner's but could dilute it make it go faster mm -hmm. i mean make it go further go further yeah. not faster uh another thing that happened recently is olive ran away from me for the first time so that was actually the second time first time she got away from me the gate was open and i didn't know it and i just happened to walk outside and my neighbor was out there and said isn't that olive up there <laughs> oh, no. and i was like yeah that is olive and she come back but this time it was my fault i didn't have her on the leash because 
we were just walking from my house to the car. It was a very short walk. We've done that a hundred times. Sometimes I leave her, sometimes I don't. She saw something and she took off and she got gone. And I went headlong down the bank behind my neighbor's house trying to find her. I was very frustrated, mad at myself, and concerned, of course, so I texted my neighbors. They were very nice. They helped me look. I called Katie immediately, and it's about 15 minutes, but Katie got there, and it was funny. Katie does not even turn the car off. She's just getting out of her car, and I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, I see all of it. And I'm like, you see her? Where? She was on the bank opposite side of where she had run run from initially and she was just all excited like she had been uh, on an adventure and Aunt Katie was here to play <laughs> yeah so we we yeah. put her back over the fence and uh and walked back up to the house and that was that was scary you know I just didn't know I knew she would probably come back but I just didn't know she would know how to get back I didn't know how far she had gone and she must have looped around on me when mm -hmm. I was down in the woods so and there is a busy road and there is a, a busy, very road. busy road yeah. uh, if she had went that if far. she had went that yeah. far it would have taken her a little while to get to yeah. that road but still that was yeah. the concern and there's yeah. a big pack or a big tract of land and I was worried if she got off on that that there was no people because I figured you know, we know a decent amount of people that live on our road, so I thought maybe if she went up to one of them, I could just go, like, door to door. Oh, have you seen this dog? And, mm -hmm. and they might know where yeah. she was at. But, you know, all is well that ends well, and you can definitely bet that I've kept her on the leash. Yeah. Yeah. So, another thing we could talk about is an update for Katie. Oh, yeah, what Katie's been doing. While you're getting those out to show us, Corey, I will say one thing. Another, Corey reminded me. A lot of people said, because Corey has a great video about her beds, too. When Matt and I did ours, a lot of people said, well, you should use cross braces like Corey did. And ours didn't come with any uh, cross br braces because Corey got larger, like wider. Yeah. Uh, so I think those would really be necessary. But ours are pretty narrow, the ones They're that like we were eight, using. Eight feet by two feet, I think, is your configuration. Yeah. And even yeah. the ones that me and Austin did, we've done one of them and we'll do at least another one, nine and a half by two and a half feet, that you don't have to put those yeah. crossbars in them. Yeah. Um, it's just if like four feet and wider. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of people suggested, which was really great suggestions, if we do have problems with that, that Matt could just put, you know, rebar on the sides to hold or whatever. I don't, totally. I don't think we will in those because they're just two feet wide and they're pretty sturdy. Pretty sturdy. They're really nice. Yeah. I'm pretty pleased with them yeah. so far. But anyway, so yeah, Katie. Katie's been very busy. She's in fact busy right now. That's why she couldn't come and join us for this. She's in the in her dungeon, as she calls it, mm -hmm. slaving away. But I said, well, what have you been doing? So we can tell people, what have you been mostly working on? So she said she'd been doing a lot of stacker rings. Now, if you're like me, I, I'm like, I don't even exactly know what that is. So Corey can share some of them and explain. It might, it might be hard to see. I'm not sure. Let's see if I can help. See if we can focus here. I don't know if it's going to focus. I don't know. Maybe what back if I put it on, on my hand? Yeah, maybe. Put it on my hand. And put, yeah. Maybe. No. Yeah, that might be better. There we go. Yeah, there. So you can kind of see. It's so it's three rings. Yeah, and one uh, of them's got the stone. One of them is just kind of metal, and then there's just a band. But they're really pretty the way they stack, and they're uh, they're real comfortable. You know, they don't get in the way of anything. But they're really nice, and she does different. I'll show you just real quick. So they're another. kind of, that's one of her kind of made-to-order. Yeah. It's just always on her site. And we will link to her, her Etsy shop down below. It's Stamey Creek Creations. We'll link to it. But mm. it's always on there, and then you just have to, um, if you wanted it, you know, you just have to pick out your color and your size or whatever she has. Yeah, and then these are just plain. It's just kind of one stone and just the, and I put this yeah. back on. Sorry, I didn't have that on before, but... Um, so, so yeah, that one, when you look at it, for me especially, um, I'll try to get us back in focus. When you look at it, um, just from a distance or whatever, it looks like it's like a intricate, like a band, like a thick band with little details. Right. But it's actually three rings. Yeah, and they're nice. She hammers them and adds texture. Yeah. And she got a lot of different stones. These are both agates, I think, yeah. of some sort, but... Anyways, they're really nice. I like these. When I put that this one on, I was like, yeah, I think I'll just, uh, <laughs> I think I'll just take that one. I think I'll yeah. just put this back on right yeah. here because yeah. I really liked it. They're comfortable, and I like that. Some rings yeah. are not comfortable, but these are. Yeah. has a real pretty look, though. It looks yeah. like a real intricate band when you're just like glancing at it from a distance. Sorry, Katie. Yeah. I may lose this. I'm just kidding. I won't take it. Yeah. Yeah, she might. You might talk her into it. Yeah. She might make you some. Yeah. Yeah. She might make you some for. 
next birthday or something like that. Maybe for your anniversary. I don't yeah. know what Austin would think about yeah. that. <laughs> Here's your anniversary present. Here's yeah. uh, Corey Ring. So. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So she's been busy with that. Uh, kind of rearranged her shop. Several people ask for a tour. I said I will tell her she needs to do that. They need to do a video of her just touring sure. her little shop. Uh, it would be interesting anyway, but this would be a good time since she's kind of rearranged and got it the kind of got it the way that she that she wants it or or how it would be be more efficient, I guess is what it really was. So one other thing is I wanted to share back to the gardening. We can't me and Corey both so excited that's we've got gardening on the brain. But I wanted to share this with you, this little book. So you think of um Reader's Digest or Guidepost, if you ever were a fan of reading them, just kind of heartwarming stories, sometimes educational, but mostly just heartwarming, whether it was comical, make you smile, or, you know, kind of make you tear up, kind of sweet, um, or, uh, I mean, just any facet of life that just is really touching, but everyday things, you know, you think about everyday things. Well, this little book is like that, and I'm not sure how Miss Cindy found it. It's like a little magazine, doesn't, I think it comes out four times a year, I think four times a year each each season, and I don't know how she found it, but she got it for me a couple of years ago, and got the, like a subscription for me, and it just comes in the mail, and I so enjoy it, it's got the best little stories, and they're all about gardening, it's all about gardening, now it might be somebody that's really struggling with their roses, because the gophers ate them all, or it might be, you know, the wonder of, of your first red tomato that you ever grew, or maybe you're trying to get your kids to, you know, or maybe sadly it's the last garden you'll ever have. Just heartwarming stories. I always enjoy it. And another thing that's really neat about it is through it, it's just black and white. Don't have no color photos or anything like that. It has some amazing though um, drawings, I guess you would call them, Corey, wouldn't you call mm -hmm. that drawings? In black and white, they are amazing. I don't know. I mean, and they they tell who do who does them, but for them, but they are just so pretty. But it also, along with that, it has. Um, like little, you know, the little advertisements, there, there's not many, but then they're all really interesting, things that I've never heard of, like this one here says, Miss Tizzy's Weeds and Seeds, and so it'll tell you about it. Here's one, 45 cent uh, seed packets. I can't even say that, the gour gourmet garden. So lots of different, different uh, little advertisements, but really interesting. A lot of people ask us about the hoe Matt uses. I found it. It's in, in one of these, um, one of the books, and it was a advertisement for it. And I think it's way cool tools. I don't know. I'll look and put that in the description below too. But it's handmade in the United States, and it's like one piece welded together. So it's like a hoe that you can't really, you know, like the wooden ones come undone sometimes. Uh, it's it's heavy though. It's it's pretty much too heavy for me. But Matt loves it. He says, "I wish I'd had a hoe like that ever garden I've ever mm -hmm. ever made." And we've had it a couple of years too. But the name of it is Green Green Prince Green Prince Gardening Stories from the Heart. It's just so enjoyable to read, especially if you're a gardener. I think if you weren't a gardener, you'd still enjoy it too. But it's just those kind of heartwarming stories that really lift you up. And I'll put the like the information down below. I think that you could probably go online and order it. I'll find that if I can and, and put that um, as well. It's got like a little thing in it where you can send off your subscription, but surely you can order it online. Green prints. And if you're interested in it, this is the winter one, the winter edition. So it's it's fairly small. And I, I don't really remember as far as, let's see if I can see how much it costs. Yeah, it's $27 for a year. Yeah, twenty-seven dollars for if you do a a full year. Here it says inside here. I guess that's or that may be for that might be twenty-seven dollars if you're getting two, like you get one and that may have been a special. So I'm not sure how much it is. You'll have to go look. But if you do decide to actually go and and purchase and you know sign up for a subscription, tell them that I sent you. They don't know who I am, but tell them. Tell but them they that, could. But tell them that Celebrate Appalachia or Tipper sent sent told you about the green prints and thought that you would enjoy it. Just wanted to share it with you though, in case that you'd like to to get your own copy. Is there anything else, Corey? Anything else you can think about? Uh, we were going to say a little bit. Uh, we'll give you a little tease about the video that's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> you want to tease or you want me to? Uh, Corey and I got to go and spend the day at Bryson Farm Supply, and it was amazing, and we so enjoyed it, and it was in Silva, North Carolina. We'll have all the details, and you'll get to meet uh, the wonderful person that owns the place and see, get a peek into the just the it was just really neat cool. wasn't it it's was really cool and it's really a good resource too for the community yeah, if, you, if you're local I yeah mean, even within an hour or two or it'd three. be worth driving to yeah. yeah especially when their greenhouse opens which will be uh, on up in april but even now they've got so much to offer oh yeah uh, so much and best of all they've got that wonderful where you just walk in the door and you feel like your family They've got that feeling, yeah. and they're not, they're totally willing to sit there and talk to you about, well, this might work, but that won't work, but this is what I've found. Uh, it's wonderful for gardeners, for people who raise animals. I'll, you know, just we were really impressed, so we're excited to share the video with you. So, we hope that you enjoy kind of catching up with me and Corey and, and Katie. Um, see what we've had going on. Hopefully I answered some of the questions that people had been asking about the about the garden and about the bank, about their names, and uh, which we should have thought of to explain all that, but we didn't. But I hope you enjoyed that. And as always, uh, we just hope you'll drop back by often help us celebrate Appalachia. We really appreciate each and every one of you.